Hello, citizens of Gotham. Welcome. My name is Graham Elwood. You are watching the Anything Can Happen game show. We're going to about to bring Ron on and our contestants on another exciting night at uh, the Political Vigilante, folks. Uh, we've got two fantastic contestants. Uh, first time contestant, Murray Valeriano, and repeating contestant, Rosie Tran. Uh, we've only had a couple repeat contestants, uh, Jimmy Dorse, Steph Samarano, Rosie, I think. I don't know if there's been another one. So it's very exciting. Thank you, everybody, to wa who is watching on the YouTube and, of course, Facebook and rockfin.com slash Graham Elwood. Um, so we will bring uh, – I think we'll do we'll, – I kind of like the format of doing the show first, and then when the show's over, Ron and I do a You Should Know This. Um, so we will do that, ladies and gentlemen. Hit the like button. Share this out on your social media. And, uh, you know, support the show at rockman.com slash Graham Elwood. Hello, everybody over at Rockman. Doc Terman is Bill Nye, the highest guy. Uh, thank you for joining us. And, of course, if you do a tip at rockman.com slash Graham Elwood, you are supporting the show, and I will read those uh, later. And also, if you join Rockfin Premium, you get all of my premium content, Ron Placone's premium content, uh, and I believe even... Um, Rosie Trans premium content, in addition to uh, many other people on that fine platform, ladies and gentlemen. Um, the shirt gets a little busy. This pattern gets a little busy, but I just felt like it felt like this felt like the game show needed a collared shirt, ladies and gentlemen. Um, let us bring our co-host of Anything Can Happen from the Get Your News On with Ron podcast and. Uh, Contributor to the Jimmy Dore Show, ladies and gentlemen, Ron Placone. Hey, Graham. What's up, buddy? How are you? I'm good, buddy. How are you doing, Ron? I'm okay. I'm okay. It's been a kind of long week. I uh, yeah. Lucy is uh, is sick. She's mm -hmm. starting to do a little better, but uh, but she's a little under the weather. And you know, when you have something like this happen, where uh, you know uh, a loved one takes ill, you realize uh, how much so much of the shit you spend time on doesn't fucking matter. Um, you know, like, like it really hits home, but you're just like, fuck all of this. Not in a bad way. Just, uh, so t t tonight's show is kind of like anything can happen, but fuck it, you know, in a <laughs> good really... way. Anything can happen is a polite way of saying, fuck it. Right. You know and I, I mean? like that. <laughs> it really is just a nice way to go. Anything can happen. It's just like, ah, fuck it. Who cares? Like anything can happen. Don't care if it does. Don't care if it does happen or does not happen. Who gives a shit? Um, That's the subheading of this show. The polite fuck it game show. <laughs> That's how we're going to call this show. Anything can happen. Anything the polite can. fuck it. Yeah. Um, a game that belongs show on where a t -shirt. everyone involved really doesn't care. <laughs> like that. <laughs> that's we've had people just give away points before <laughs> just give away we have points. people just like ah, give them another shot why not just Who cares? Full, i don't want to all right i don't know say the same wrong answer twice because they don't <laughs> care they just don't give a shit and you know what they shouldn't um <laughs> what's going on in the world you really shouldn't get you shouldn't care about an online game you shouldn't care about anything that's on youtube quite honestly <laughs> yeah you really shouldn't you really shouldn't <laughs> really means it all means very little ron um but new climate report says the planet is collapsing faster than we thought so anything can happen ron yeah. <laughs> anything can happen um all right dude well let's uh you want to you want to bring our contestants on and get right into the game? That's usually what happens next. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> Again, a very polite way of saying fuck it. <laughs> um, really, really. <laughs> well, I just love how a game show is like. They always ask that as if the other person's going to say no. Like, shall we bring out our contestants? And it's never happened where the person was like, nah. Like, that's nah. like that'd be fucking weird. <laughs> that'd be great. Do we have to? I kind of didn't want to. Can we just? I was this thinking together? tonight we just eat spaghetti. <laughs> I wanted to throw a wrench 
Is the price right? I don't know. You're not going to find out either. But here's my homemade marinara. I'd be like, what the fuck? This is just... Wow. The Rod show Rod got canceled. Because <laughs> the other guy didn't say, yeah, let's bring him out. John Bob or whoever. I don't even know. who, who does. It's Drew Carey now, right? Like... Uh, let's let's stick with John Bob because I, I I don't know of ever game show host that's ever been called John Bob, but I want John Bob be. was like the host of The Price Is Right, but he was like he was like the host of The Price Is Right the way Roger Moore was James Bond. Like he's only in one or two movies, and most people didn't like it, but a couple people swear by it. Like a couple people were like, "Your Eyes Only." If Your Eyes Only was a good freaking movie, and everyone else is like, "No, no, that's how John Bond was." Is The Price Is Right host? Well, that's actually. Roger Moore hosted a bunch of them in the 70s and 80s. Uh, your, your Her Majesty's Secret Service, actually, this we're getting into a you should know this. Uh, I didn't know any of that. Category. Um, but this is actually, and I'm blanking on his name all of a sudden, uh, uh, Richard Lazenby. Um, he was an Australian who did Her Majesty's Secret Service. And um, yeah, he's, but it's an interesting story and a documentary uh, Lazenby started to become, he did that in the late, in mid to late sixties. And he started to get involved in the anti-Vietnam movement and growing his hair. And he was like, I don't know that I want to do a movie that basically promotes war and, and c colonialism and all this other stuff. Oh, so wow. they, they were like, I think you, we're going to replace you. Um, yeah. So. It's a very, uh, very interesting story. I was going to bring our one of our guests on, but uh, well, I guess we'll bring her on second since she's not ready. Um, let's let's bring the contestants. Anything on. can happen, folks. Anything can happen. A contestant might go. Eh, you know what? Fuck it. Maybe Rosie went. Do I really want to do this now? I'm out. You know, she just said, fuck it. Maybe it's did she win last time? Maybe she's like, I'm going to retire with a one and zero record. Yeah, she, I think she did win last time. She did beat she Karen Rontowski. I think she did. Right. Oh, I don't, I don't remember. I remember that was a very good match and that was a was. really fun one, but I forget if she won or if Karen won. George Lazenby. I'm sorry. I said Richard Lazenby. Yes. Yeah, George Lazenby was the, we'll find out in a second. Again, really, you'd think the guys that run the show would know like who's won and who's lost and kept track of it, but clearly we don't give a shit because anything. Can no, I, it's hard. I mean, yeah, you don't remember every single winner and I mean, that's come on. You at least remember who, like, who played who. Like, I, I, I didn't remember that Karen and Rosie were the same episode, but. Oh, that's great. God, I love this. I love that there's just, like, someone who's barely, like, who's giving a shit less than me is, is really, <laughs> is, it, it's beautiful. It's really a beautiful thing. It's really, uh, I go through this with Lee Camp all the time on government secrets because he's really figured it out. He's like, wow, Graham, you're just barely, I'm like, yeah, I, I, it takes me so much energy to do my live stream. I mean, who the fuck cares about a goddamn Batman themed news show? Like who cares? <laughs> like nobody gives a shit. So what is the point of any of this? Um, but let's play. Anything can happen. Ron Placone. Let's uh, do it. Let's break on. Ron, tell us who our first contestant is on Anything Can Happen. First time contestant. First time contestant. Very, very funny dude. Uh, was the host of the Road Stories podcast. Please give it up for Murray Valeriano. Murray. <laughs> hey, what's happening? How are you guys? What'd you do to your name? It's George <laughs> Lazenby. <laughs> Look what he did. <laughs> by, the, by, by the way, and Graham... You were at one time a comedy film nerd, so you should have known his name was George. But <laughs> did I, I believe this? And, and I know I'm stepping into your grounds here. He like he like walked on to the lot or to George Broccoli or whatever the producer's name is like, I want to be Bond. Yeah, he did. There is some sort of super swaggy, like right? cocksure story of him just like, I'm your next James Bond, mate. And they were just like, OK. And. <laughs> You can um, get away with anything with an Australian accent. Anything with an Australian, anything yeah, yeah. with an Australian accent. Yeah, yeah. And that's that's how Mel Gibson got like every gig ever. Right? Yeah. He just he's walked her. He's just like, I'm gonna do something about Jesus, mate. And they were like, okay. He ended up dating the girl he called Sugar Tits that arrested him for a DUI. <laughs> I mean, you can get away with anything. The Holocaust never happened, mate. Sure, I'll sign a three picture deal. And they're like, <laughs> you got it, buddy. Panties hit the floor. Like. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Murray, you just celebrated a birthday. 
I did. August 18th. Happy Good birthday, job, buddy. buddy. Happy Thank belated. You, I appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Another year. Another year, buddy. That's great. And um, thanks. You surfed and went to the track, right? You're celebrating. Yeah, that was today, actually. Well, thank you for cutting that short and uh, coming. Uh, did you lose that much at the track that you're like, oh, I better go do this game show? I didn't make I could. I, sadly, I couldn't. I had to cut it short because I couldn't find a babysitter today. So. Oh, so, but awesome. I get to come here. If I went to the track, I wouldn't be able to do this. And I'm very excited to see Ron. There you go. <laughs> I'm excited to see Ron. You maybe we could do without, but Ron, it's always a treat to see. <laughs> that would be funny if you went to the track. You're like, I lost a ton of money at the track. I better go do this game show with no monetary prize. Make up for it. I'm trying to get Rosie Turan to place a, a lay some money on it, but she's not going for it. I know. Mm. Murray clearly has a gambling problem. That's what we're uncovering <laughs> in, in tonight's episode. <laughs> Ten bucks says I don't. <laughs> Mary Valeriano, ladies and gentlemen, very funny stand up comedian. Let's bring a uh, returning champion. Um, yep, that's right. Originally out of New Orleans, Louisiana. We talked a lot about New Orleans when she did my show, and she's part of the podcast Out of the Box. And Rosie and BJ saved the world. Please welcome back Rosie Tran. Rosie, hey. how you doing? Am I the returning champ? Did I beat Karen? Didn't she doesn't even remember if she won. No <laughs> Let's say that you did and that we're bringing back returning winners. Okay. I'm putting my headset on so I can hear you guys better since I don't have a fancy mic. There you go. Nice, Rosie. Idea. That's, that's good. Um, Rosie, how I, have you been? I'm good. I think I beat Karen by hair. I remember beating her and then getting sorely behind. So that's I was traumatized by that. <laughs> Yeah, maybe did maybe Karen did win. Maybe we brought. I think back she won by like one point. <laughs> I may have won by one point or I lost by one point. I can't remember now. We're bringing back someone who might be a returning loser. We don't know. <laughs> um, we don't know how this is going to go. This is but why I'm not putting money on myself against Murray. Murray's Murray's coming very confident into his first ever anything can happen. Murray's contest. very confident. Brushing up um, on the Spiro Agnew <laughs> trivia. <laughs> <laughs> very excited so i am doing well i'm wearing my kitty ears in honor of my new podcast on rockman um hello crypto kitty 2.0 and it's crypto news and interviews oh that's awesome so for anybody uh i don't know if, who may be new to the show but we've had rosie on political vigilante numerous times to talk about cryptocurrency you were actually one of the people that helped me sort of uh open my eyes and knowledge about it and you now have a show on rockman which is another great reason to be a rockman premium member because you get to enjoy premium content from everybody, including Rosie Tran. Um, so what do we got coming up on, on Crypto Kitty? Um, I just had um, Erica Gemma. She's a big crypto advocate, a Bitcoin advocate. And we I did a full interview with her and she talks about, you know, um, everything that's happening in the crypto space. And then I do little crypto blurbs. So talking about all the news and all the things that are upcoming in the crypto space. And it's very, very positive. I'm really excited about everything that's happening right now. Um, yeah. especially with some of the newer coins and, and the adoption that's happening, um, overseas and things like that. So I actually just found out that, um, I think I was born to be in the crypto space because apparently Vietnam is the number one country that's currently using crypto. That's awesome. And I think it's going to be more countries. I mean, when you see what happened with El Salvador and Vietnam, it's these countries that actually, it might take the big, rich first world countries longer to adopt it because they have so much vested in the central banks that it's going to be these countries that have been screwed over by first world central bank countries that are going to go, why don't we just adopt it? Cause it'll help us. <laughs> right. I mean, yeah, that's exactly what's happening. And that happened in Vietnam. You know, my mom has these horrible stories of leaving the country with, you know, money that became worthless um, afterwards. So that's a big reason I'm an advocate of crypto because it helps you preserve your money. And that's why that's what creates a lot of in income inequality is people having their money stolen um, from governments and banks and things like that. So, you know, in the case of my family, my parents weren't rich when they lived in Vietnam, but, you know, their currency became worthless. So um, people that are fleeing fascist governments and other um, dangerous governments can take their wealth on a hard drive. So it's really cool. Vietnam, another country America ruined. Right on. Way to go. <laughs> Just, uh, I know. We were, we were like Afghanistan 1.0, right? Yeah, you guys were the, the OG, the <laughs> Afghanistan OG. And um, America didn't learn anything from that, so. No, they've learned scary. absolutely nothing. 
It's uh, four presidents, three point five trillion dollars to replace the and twenty years to replace the Taliban with the Taliban. So we've done a really fine job in Afghanistan. Oh, we also bought that um, a bunch of like helicopters and other um, high grade military equipment that now the Taliban has. Um, you know, right? Isn't that scary. great? Yeah, it's, oh, scary. it's so exciting. It's almost exactly what happened with the mujahideen and after the soviets left it's really great it's just yeah. like we've done such a great job there speaking it's, of it's gonna be rough till trump comes back in 2024 i mean if we all just <laughs> <laughs> i don't know buckle down i think maybe and just what are you comedian to the grindstone and you know we'll, we'll get it in we'll get it in. yeah it's we have a fantastic system we really do um i'm just glad that when obama in 2009 put 30,000 troops into Afghanistan and said, we'll be out of there in 18 months. I'm just glad he stuck to his guns and that happened. That's what I'm really make the happiest about that. We've been out of Afghanistan for 10 years now. And now it's a flourishing I think, country. Isn't Afghanistan his Nobel Peace Prize. The shine <laughs> up his Nobel Peace Prize. <laughs> it, wasn't, it, wasn't Afghanistan the longest war in US history? Yes, 20 years. Yep. Wow. And Afghanistan could buy cigarettes if it was... The Afghan yeah, there's, there's, American presidents could buy cigarettes now and watch porn. There's people fighting in Afghanistan who weren't, who were born after 9-11 and after the war started. So uh. that's, think of that. Speaking of trivia, Ron, <laughs> let's, let's, uh, let's get into anything can happen. Let's get into this exciting show. Speaking A war of could go on for 20 years. Anything can happen. <laughs> anything can happen, Ron. America can bankrupt uh countries and we're gonna do a game show um <laughs> all right uh rosie you've been on the show before murray this is your first time we're gonna do our first category who said this republican or democrat i will read a quote first person to raise their hand gets to answer that question if they answer uh -oh. correctly, i'm ready they, i'm ready i'm ready they get they get they get they get, they get one point <laughs> And then a chance for a second point at naming the exact person that did it if they get that wrong the other person, the other contestant has a chance to steal that point. All of these quotes are from prominent Republicans uh, and Democrats, presidents, vice presidents, key cabinet members like uh, Secretary of Defense, not like Secretary of Housing. I don't know. I think there was a couple of obscure Republicans last time I played. I, I doubt it, but you never know. We never know who we threw in there. Um, I might have thrown somebody in there. Um, or somebody who was a, a ran for president and lost, you know, like a key presidential candidate. So it'll be a, it'll be a, it, we're not picking like some random, you know, uh, person that was like in the Senate for one term and nobody knew who they were like, the, it's not nobody, Ted Cruz's mistress. It is not Ted Cruz's mistress. Mistress. That is incorrect. <laughs> um, but it could be like speaker of the house or somebody like that. Um, so, um, I don't know. Was there anything else I was going to say? I think that's it for the rules, ladies and gentlemen. Um, now first question, who said this Republican or Democrat, the bridges and highways we fail to repair, excuse me, the bridges and highways we fail to repair today will have to be rebuilt tomorrow at many times the cost. Murray. Murray. Democrat. Murray Valeriano. That is incorrect. Whoa. Murray gets no points. It is obviously a Republican. <laughs> Rosie now has a chance to get on the board with the first point of today's contest by naming which prominent Republican said this quote, the bridges and highways. we. I don't know. So I'm going to guess Ronald Reagan. <laughs> didn't need me to read it doesn't care just doing a dart i knew guess. it was i knew it was a republican i just didn't know who rosie so tran you're in the lead that was ronald ah! reagan who said that <laughs> <laughs> oh it oh. felt like a reagan quote yeah and being that we just did this big infrastructure bill, all of this could have been done 40 years ago, uh, but it won't be. And most of this infrastructure bill, I'm sure, will just go to contractors and it won't actually fix anything. But Ron, we know anything can happen. Anything can happen. It'll go towards the wall. Build the wall. <laughs> that's the build the wall. That'll that's be the breaking. Build the wall that's breaking. <laughs> it um, Part of the wall has collapsed. I don't know if you know that. 
Of course oh, it yeah, was. there was that. Yeah. I saw that footage. This week, this week it collapsed due to a storm because of the shady contractors that were hired. Well, no, oh. that that one, the one billion bipartisan quote unquote infrastructure package, it does like privatize bipartisan. all the roads. <laughs> yeah, it privatizes mm. all the roads, makes some toll roads. It's yeah, aye, aye, aye. this is why I don't want to pay taxes. <laughs> yep, this is why. <laughs> This is why you should buy Bitcoin and uh, move out of America and grow your own food. But um, <laughs> all right. Rosie Tran has the early lead one to nothing. Murray came out very confident, very bold <laughs> and very wrong. I still uh, think got, both of you guys are wrong. So I'm <laughs> I'm going to go ahead. Just mark one for Mur. Right Murray will be tank. keeping his, his own score. <laughs> Murray Mariano's got his own scoreboard. Um, all right. Who said this, Republican or Democrat? Saving the planet is better economics than burning it up. Dem Rosie. Democrat. Rosie Tran, you just extended your lead to nothing. That was yes. a Democrat. And now Rosie with a chance to take an early three-point lead. Which Democrat said that quote? Ralph Nader. <laughs> no, that is incorrect. Ralph Nader is also a member of the Green Party. Oh. Yeah. But he might have said, I don't even think, was he a Democrat in the 70s? He might have he said He was a Democrat, and then he went Green Party after he got disillusioned, I think. I think you're correct. But that, great answer, incorrect. Murray, a chance now to cut Rosie's lead in half, which prominent Democrat said this quote. Saving the planet is better economics than burning it up. I'm going to say, ironically, Obama. <laughs> I love hearing contestants, like, the logic behind the guesses, because there's so much is revealed in that. Well, because, like, all of the time, the logic is always, well, that's an annoying fucking thing to say, and here's an annoying person. <laughs> Can I make a guess that doesn't get points if he's wrong? Just to guess. No, no, no. This is the contest. This is we're in a we're in a critical Who point I'm here. Guessing? Um, <laughs> uh, Murray is incorrect. Oh. So now Rosie has a chance. What? Al Gore? Oh, damn it! No, that's wrong too. Oh, that was oh, a good, that was a good guess, one. though, Rosie. Because of inconvenient um, truth and stuff. Maybe this is from the movie. That is incorrect. Ron Placone. Tell them who actually Rosie shouldn't get a second chance of that. I was wrong. So anyway, you both don't get anything, but you both <laughs> you both were wrong. Rosie was wrong twice. And now so, you wonder why I'm keeping my own score. <laughs> <laughs> anything can happen. We are gonna have a second score sheet, the Murray Valeriano <laughs> score sheet. Uh, this contest already under protest. Ron Placone, tell everybody which prominent Democrat said that quote it was actually bill clinton oh and I, I guess it was his his uh his advice to anyone coming after him because he's like hey i didn't do anything about this but you might i mean i don't know maybe you want to do he's something like, the earth is kind of messed up we need yeah the, the earth is kind of messed up i i do regulated the media and banks anyway i'm out yeah. <laughs> sorry about yeah. the dress thing yeah i was uh repealing glass steagall when everyone was talking about monica lewinsky's dress so that happened behind closed doors that led us up to the 2008 crash anyway ladies and gentlemen rosie has the lead to nothing no point she got one point on that round but no additional points but Ron, we've seen big leads evaporate in the past <laughs> evaporate quickly yeah this yeah, is yeah. what happened to me last time mm. well, I, I protest the term big lead <laughs> <laughs> we're two minutes into this thing man yeah one question it could all be tied up murray i have to overhype everything when i <laughs> use these fair words. fair fair you are rosie tran over. has one of the biggest leads that has ever happened in tonight's episode so with us meaning that anything can happen all right please folks hit the like button share this out on your social media and tell your friends they are missing out on history being made. All right, next question. Who said this, Republican or Democrat? 
I come from a tradition in the Senate. You shake your hand and that's it. I don't even know what that means. Raise your hand. <laughs> <laughs> Who's who raised their hand? No one raised it. Rosie. Democrat. Rosie Tran, you just got a third point. Ah, now making yes. it the most double gargantuan lead we have ever seen in the history of numbers. Um, <gasps> I was banking you'd get that one wrong, Tran. <laughs> well, now a chance to bring it to a four point lead. And if you cannot name the correct Democrat who said this, Murray Valeriano will have a shot at getting Can I food. request the quote be repeated? Yes, Rosie, you can. I came from a tradition in the Senate. You shake your hand and that's it. Which prominent Democrat said that quote? And can I look it up on Google? <laughs> no, absolutely not. That would be called cheating. That's what we call cheating. All right. Don't well, chat either. since we're talking about the Clintons, let's say Hillary Clinton. Great guess, but incorrect. Murray Valeriano. That was uh, close. That was close because... Uh, it was in response to Hillary shaking her ass on the deck. <laughs> of the, so that was close. Murray, did we say Democrat? Or, oh, we said Democrat. Okay. Um, I don't remember a big handshaking conspiracy. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna go. I right, go Al Gore. Murray Valeriano, that answer is incorrect. Ooh. No kidding. <laughs> <laughs> this is the most in the history of this game show that Al Gore has been mentioned. Yes. I don't know why. Like, no one's ever mentioned him ever because he's Al Gore. But, like, no tonight. Ever, well, well, no one's ever mentioned Al Gore or Ralph Nader. To the, 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 I don't think those two guys have ever been mentioned on this show. <laughs> Fingers crossed for a tipper. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, Rosie picked up another point. Dan Harris, wow. I'm not stoned. Wait, well, we got to tell them who stoned. it was. Yeah, I was like, are you going to tell us who it is? Ron, tell everybody who said that quote. So the big hint was that when Graham gave that quote, Graham was not misspeaking. That's what the guy actually said, because it was Joe Biden. Yes. Wow. Misspeaking. Oh. Joe Biden. You shake your hand. Yeah. You shake your hand and that's it. That's what he said. <laughs> that was a very good Joe Biden impression in hindsight. <laughs> Just fumble through words and talk slowly. Yeah. Um, you weren't sleeping though, so I couldn't tell. <laughs> I was a little too a little You too were much too fun. alive. You were too you weren't enough of a puppet. You needed to be more puppet like. <laughs> Yes, that's the biggest Maybe if Ron thing. stands behind you like in a central banker costume. <laughs> <laughs> like the Monopoly guy. With like, like an ice Ron's... cream cone in my hand. <laughs> yeah. All right. Am I revealing my political leanings too much here? <laughs> yeah, don't do that on this show. That really bums the audience <laughs> out. They really don't like knowing where politics. I try to keep mine close to the vest. Um, all right. Murray is now trailing three to nothing. Will maybe he... I should have bet him. Up. Maybe I should have bet him that ten bucks. I know. Oh, look at you're falling for the classic, uh, the classic <gasps> fake out. You've never obviously hustled pool. <laughs> I get you in right now for fifty bucks, and then I blow you out of the water. <laughs> Ooh, maybe A Murray. Color money action for you there, Graham Elwood. I love it. Nice pull on the Paul Newman Tom Cruise classic, a remake of The Hustler. Not a remake, sequel, no, actually. Yeah, sequel. With sequel. Forrest Whitaker taking down Fast Eddie Felson. I know. It was great. Soundtrack um, Eric Clapton. Wow. <laughs> no, I'm sorry, soundtrack Robbie Robertson. I apologize. All right. Listen to that. Wow. wow. Do you have a music podcast, Murray? I have a music and comedy game show <laughs> called For What It's Worth. You can catch it on YouTube. Uh, new episodes coming in September. Outstanding. Well, too bad none of those got you points. <laughs> so let's go. <laughs> Let's, let's go to the next question. Rosie has the lead three, nothing, um, our returning either champion or loser. We don't know, but she, she's definitely a, played. She's, she said that she has been on that. We can confirm with a hundred percent certainty. All right. 
Next question, who said this, Republican or Democrat? Families is where our nation finds hope, where wings take dream. Rosie. Republican. That is correct, Rosie. You now have a four to nothing lead with a chance to make it Murphy, five to nothing. Um, um, I need a repeat again, please, if you don't mind, of the quote. In yes. the person's tone <laughs> and demeanor. <laughs> I cannot do demeanor and I cannot do tone. I will uh, read it as straight as I can. Families is where our nation finds hope, where wings take dream. Okay. I'm going to say... You said it could be a president, a speaker of the house. What were the other two options? It'd be somebody key. So president, vice president, speaker of the house, a key cabinet member, or somebody who was a presidential candidate, but lost. Okay. I'm going to go with major president and I'm going to say George W. Bush. Rosie Tran. You now have a five point ah, lead. <laughs> Just, <laughs> wow. That was the only Very one hilarious. I knew so far. That was the only one I knew. Who <laughs> did you raise your hand? Yeah, you should have raised your hand. Well, I, I knew That's... it after you said Republican. I knew it had to be a Bush, uh, <laughs> one of those two. <laughs> Boy, the one time Murray got his hand up, he was wrong. Since that time, <laughs> Rosie Tran has been. If you'll notice, and all the fanboys playing at home, I was trying to play her wrong answers against her, but she's been fucking <laughs> rocking it. So now I'm switching strategies, Sean Smith. <laughs> Norwal Tacos. You're about to see a fucking, we call it a run up. This is great that uh, Murray Valeriano is now taking personal umbrage at people in the chat. <laughs> this no, I'm telling they're on my team. <laughs> oh, well, not that guy. Well, Ron, one thing we have not seen so far in the history of this illustrious game show is a complete shutout. Could that happen tonight, Ron? I There's a first time for everything, Graham, <laughs> and everything could happen. I think it's time we switch topics. Mm, I say we go switch. to a new topic and that would be the first time in game show history where anyone has goose egged off the first topic. That is correct. But <laughs> the night is young. The game you know is what? young. Plenty of winners, Rosie. You know who's <laughs> going to be remembered? Old goose egg Valeriano. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. It's just so the first time. When you have a goose egg back, Graham, when you have a goose egg back. We will have goose eggs back. Absolutely. If you're that bad, we absolutely will have to have you back. Like there's, there's, there's no way you won't. Make, I mean, if you just want screen time, this is a fantastic strategy, Murray. I mean, you are literally guaranteeing a repeat of the worst guy ever. So probably like, I don't know if you're just going in the tank, like what, but this is fantastic. I, I hope. Or it, it could be the biggest comeback ever. It could be like, dude, he goose egged the entire first segment and yes. went on to win the game because anything can happen. That's true. Like Rosie just unplugged her computer. And then Rosie she just it. took out and her own start mic. Start asking the questions. Start asking the questions. <laughs> she spiked her microphone. Like, I'm killing. Yeah. <laughs> like, now she can't hear. Oh, my goodness. Please ignore my technical difficulties. All right. Let's go to the next category. Um, the next category. We will do name that dictator. Now this, there is only one point available. I will. I thought you were going to say name that dick. Like, <laughs> well, that like was, different... that was just Republican or Democrat. I, was... Ah. <laughs> I was Which like, oh, dick dictator. Said okay. That. <laughs> okay. I'm ready. So name that dictator. I will read, um, the, what the what it is and i will give you multiple choice answers oh first person raise their raise their hand gets a guess if they get it wrong there's four multiple choice answers if they get it wrong the second person has to has a chance to pick up a point a point from the three remaining answers That's there's only I one point available per question so here we go name that dick tater um all right 
Here we go. Rosie Tran has the lead. Five to nothing. Murray's making history. Here we <laughs> yes, he is. This dictator made their three-year-old son a colonel. Was it A, Cleopatra, B, Rafael Trujillo, C, Richard Simmons, D, King George? Murray. Murray. King George. Now I think he's trying to lose because that's <laughs> that's wrong. Now I really think he's trying. I mean, to I mean a lot of people don't consider him much more of a tyrant than Richard Simmons. Sure, <laughs> a little bit more of a tyrant than Richard Simmons. All right, I'm sorry, Marie Valeriano, that was wrong. <laughs> um, the three remaining for Rosie to pick up a point are A. Cleopatra, B. Rafael Trujillo, C. Richard Simmons. B. Rafael Trujillo. You now have a six point lead, Rosie Tran. I think she has to say his name. <laughs> Rafael Trujillo. Well, now it doesn't count. <laughs> That's correct, Rosie. It is B. Rafael Trujillo. You have, it is six nothing. Um, so we should play by ping pong rules. And if Rosie gets to 11 quickly, the game's just over. Oh, yeah. We got to have a slaughter roll for sure. Yeah, yeah, 11 yeah. is done. I mean, it's over. It's All so. Right. Fun fact I also suck at ping pong. <laughs> <laughs> Do you keep your own score when you play that, too? <laughs> All right. This is fantastic. This is not the biggest lead anyone has ever had on this show. This is the biggest lead Yay! ever. Yeah. Yeah. I don't uh, think it's the biggest like finish though i think we have had a six point like victory i think i think i think dave, I think beat, dave gareth. beat gareth 10 to 4. <laughs> yeah i think he did beat him 10 to 4. Pretty so sure. six nothing is the biggest shutout lead but six a six point win is still the record held by dave anthony um all right This leader originally went to Paris to study radio technology, but when his scholarship was revoked, he returned home to attempt to build a revolution. It didn't end well. Was this A, Pol Pot, B, Peter Parker, C, Dick Cheney, D, Adolf Hitler? Oh, Rosie. Adolf Hitler. That is incorrect, Rosie oh. Tran. Quick Hand did not get her the point. Here, Murray Valeriano, are the three remaining names. A, Pol Pot. B, Peter Parker. C, Dick Cheney. I, I was going between Hitler and Pol Pot. But I believe Hitler... Wait, what, was, what did he go to school for? This leader originally went to Paris to study radio technology, but when his scholarship was revoked, he returned home to attempt to build a revolution. It didn't end well. Hitler was an artist, I believe. So I'm going to go Pol Pot. Murray Valeriano, you are now on the board. Oh! Six to one. Is this going to be the single greatest comeback ever, or will Murray lose 11 to one? I don't, don't know. know. Uh, still is in my court on my side there. I, I like how I like how Murray used logic to determine it wasn't Hitler when the other thing he could have went by was Rosie <laughs> guessed Hitler and it was wrong. Yeah, that would have been key. And then... Dick Cheney didn't ever study in Europe. Did no. Dick Cheney study anything? No. Boy, yeah. How to exploit people. Um, hey, man, I got to the right answer. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely there, correct. Right here. All right. It's not the journey. It's the destination. No, man. We've had times where like two people have guessed the wrong answer before. And it's awesome when it happened. That's all. It's my favorite part of the show. It's like, the, people, it's like the best part. When they don't <laughs> when listen. Two people guess the same wrong answer. It's I, my favorite part of the world is when people, somebody says something wrong and then someone says it, says the same wrong thing again, thinking they're right. I, it's, Sometimes I it. you just get in your head and you forget what the other person said and you just, it happens. Like I'm not saying, I mean, I would probably do it too. It's just always funny when it does. <laughs> That moment and when I'm having a serious conversation with somebody and I decide to make a joke, but I say it really straight faced about the topic we're talking about. And they like, look at me for a second 
and they think I'm serious. There's just a second or two where they're like, what the f And one of my favorite times that that's ever happened in my life is on the road with Ron Placone. And <laughs> we were driving and we were having a fantastic conversation. We always have these great, we, we joke and we laugh, but we talk sports and we always like talk politics. We get into like serious, like man, really cool discussions. And we were talking about, I think it was like the criminal justice system and how mistakes are made. And you were like, there's this actual movie you know, that they, they, they made a movie on this actual story of these two kids, like a kid went missing or something. It and was they blamed three kids. Yeah, yeah. It was called the West Memphis three. Oh yeah. And, totally. Yeah. And yeah. I was, I was telling Graham about the West Memphis three cause he was not familiar with it. So I was telling him the story and yeah, no, that, that was, that was a pretty funny conversation. It was, it was great. I was driving and Ron was in the passenger seat. He was like, man, and he was really going into it. And he was saying, and I was like, God, I think I actually saw the movie they made this out of. Uh, you know, they, they did a dramatized version of it. And he's like, yeah, this one kid was like, you know, might've been on the spectrum or something. The other kid was like a goth kid, but they were like, oh, they're into witchcraft and they're demonic and they killed these kids and it was awful. And then later they found the DNA and these guys were innocent. And Ron was like really passionate about it. We were having this really passionate discussion, but because his head was turned away, I just went, yeah, but who cares if they put in jail a couple of witch tards? <laughs> and Ron was like, if you're me, Ron was looking like this and he goes, <laughs> I'm laughing so hard. I was like doubled over laughing because he was like, for two seconds, Ron was like, are you a fucking, like, he was like, he, the look on your face was like, pull the car over, dude. I'm it done. Catch me. I was <laughs> just like, is he serious? Oh my God. That's awful. <laughs> like, God, what a horrible human being. I thought we were having this. He doesn't care. Like this is fucked up. And I'm just sitting there laughing. Oh my God. It's one of my favorite moments is to say something that that couple of seconds where they're going, did he really? Oh, <laughs> oh man. I saw, remember saw when I lived in Chicago, I saw Matt Besser on the streets in my neighborhood and we lived in the like uh, Lakeview area and he was on the streets. You know, Chicago is a big city. Everyone's on the streets. So there's people coming up to you. There's panhandlers or whatever. And I just said, uh, I just went, yo, man, I'll suck your dick for a sandwich. And he <laughs> and he did the same thing. He turned around like, oh, fuck. Like, what now? What's going happening today? I was just sitting there with a smile on my face. And he started laughing. But I didn't get the sandwich. All right, next question. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. hey -o! Oh, Rosie still has a significant lead six to Murray Valeriano's illustrious first point of the evening, ladies and gentlemen. Let's not as it. significant. Not as significant. <laughs> six to one. Next question. Um, let's see. Next question. This leader named landmarks, money, streets, and even public entities after themselves. A, Nancy Pelosi. B, Cleopatra. <laughs> C, Sapmarat uh, Niazov. D, Elon Musk. Rosie. Safra Neo, Neo I, I can't say it. Does that mean I don't get the point? <laughs> so you want C? C, yes, sir. Sapmarat Niazov? Yes. Rosie Tran, you have your six point lead back. That Yay! was correct. Rosie now has a touchdown to Murray Valeriano's Canadian Rules Football One Point <laughs> Rouge for some obscure sports trivia that most people don't know about. Um, yeah. We are going to have to impl implement a slaughter rule. If there's a 10 point slaughter rule, we're going to just do that. I thought it was 11. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, though, I mean, I think like 10. I cut my surfing trip short to be here. I want to get slaughtered <laughs> the way I was intended to get slaughtered. You're right. Since, since you couldn't find a babysitter, you should, you should lose by 11. That's fair. That's absolutely fair. Um, all right, next, next question. Um, Murray, you have to raise your hand. <laughs> I was banking on you getting that wrong, but <laughs> and I, I thought you gonna, abandoned that strategy, say Liz, Liz, Liz Estrada Nasparat. If you did, <laughs> that's correct, Liz Estrada Nasparat. <laughs> yes. All right. 
One more question in this category, and then we will move on to religious law or state law. That's hopefully where Murray makes his big comeback. All right. Name that dictator. Being a slave as a teenager really set this future emperor off as he slayed civilians en masse. A. Cleopatra. B. Kim Jong-un. C. Genghis Khan. D. Queen Mary, a.k.a. Bloody Mary. Murray. Oh, sheesh. I think Rosie had it by a little bit. Sorry, <laughs> Murray. I think she was first by a little bit. That was close. Genghis Khan. Rosie Tran. That is correct. You now have an Yay! eight to one lead. Oh, sorry, Murray. I'm sorry. It's actually Murray. pronounced Genghis Cohen. I go to the restaurant <laughs> on Fairfax all the time. Yes. Excellent. Yes, it's a local Los Angeles reference. Sorry, I don't. <laughs> Do you know who books that gig? Um, <laughs> although Graham, I just wanted to say that you are very insensitive because you did list Cleopatra and you said him in the question. Did I say that in the question, man? Did I do that? Oh my God. Maybe I did do that. Um, oh yeah. That was my fault. I wrote it. Sorry. Wow. Some that was like not ge gender binary, non-binary. Yeah, that, that sort of gave it away. Yeah. Cause there were, there were two women potential answers too my bad wow all right way to keep the patriarchy going ron man so it turns out anything can happen on this show where the patriarchy reigns supreme we, <laughs> we are ron, i'm disappointed in you i know i'm ron disappointed in me that's sort of i mean that everyone had a 50 percent chance immediately of everybody in this, who do you think's most disappointed in themselves? Just, <laughs> we're gonna... For comics, yeah, it's gonna be a tough contest to see who's the most disappointed in themselves. Um, but everybody, cancel Ron Placone and flip out online. Let's get it going. Let's get a crazy everybody flip out. He's the um, one who said witch tard. <laughs> I'm offended as a witch, Graham. I respect all witches. Come on. Um, hashtag witches matter. Hashtag witches matter. You're lucky Karen's I, not here. I know. <laughs> right? Maybe, yeah. yeah. If we had Rontowski here, she would be like, man, she'd be putting curses. She would cast on a spell on you yeah. right now. For sure. All right, new category, religious law or state law. Now we are back to a category where two points are in play i will name the law and you pick either religious law or state law if you get it right you get a point and you have a chance at a second point if it's let's say a religious law you name the religion or book that it was religious book that it was in or state law name the state it's a little harder because there's a lot to pick from but this is a chance to pick up some quick points not that there's a person trailing by seven all right. Um, religious law or state law? Slaves better obey their earthly masters. Murray. Murray. It's religious law. Murray. That is correct. You got a point. A chance for a second point. Give me that again, please. Slaves better obey their earthly masters. Can you use it in a sentence? Um, what is the sentence? Oh, right. Sorry, I was flashing back to my <laughs> spelling bee in seventh grade, which I did just as well as I'm doing tonight. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna I'm going I'm going Christianity Old Testament. Murray Valeriano, you just snatched up two quick <gasps> points. Oh boy, things are changing. Rosie eight, Murray now three. Wow, so now this is where I this is where I get out, go under. Oh, Ron. This is the college football comeback. Anything can happen. Exciting play here. Every Very round exciting. is different. This is Rory's strength. He was hoping this category was going to be played tonight. This is what he is writing all of his hopes on. Was Ron, is his deficit too much to overcome? Or can Rory <laughs> pull this up? No, Graham. From here on out, we got two points floating around on every question. Aye, it's uh, it's aye. not too big. This is still anyone's game, and this could be a momentum turning point. 
Well, what it did uh, especially is reduce the chances of the 11 point slaughter rule. That's right. Um, by getting himself ever so closer to a tie. All right. Next category, excuse me, next question in the same category, religious law or state law. Um, if you're transporting sheep, you need to have a chaperone. They might get lonely. Murray. Murray. State law. Congratulations, Murray. You oh. have another point. Oh, he is running the table now, Murray. Sheep, sheep. Which state <laughs> has this law? And I will tell you, if you get this incorrect, Rosie Tran will have a chance to guess and pick up a point. Okay. All right. Sheep. So it's You've obviously a lead. democratic state. <laughs> <laughs> it's a political joke. It's a political show. Come on. Um, sheep. Where are there a lot of sheep? Oh, that's Ireland. Um, <laughs> I go Arkansas. You, Arkansas. Yeah, yeah. Murray Valeriano, incorrect. Yeah, I know. I had a one in 38 chance. You did. You did. Rosie Tran, Murray has now cut your lead to four points. A chance here to put it back up to a five point lead. Which state has the following law? If you're transporting sheep, you need to have a chaperone. They might get lonely. I have three states in mind. <laughs> I'm going to go with Utah. Oh, that's not a bad guess. That is incorrect. Ron, tell everybody, and I'm pretty sure Murray's going to have a distinct reaction to the state that it is. Oh, really? Yeah, well, I thought both guesses were very, very good. Uh, I think Rosie was a little closer geographically. The correct answer is Montana. God damn it! That was one of my other two! <sighs> you think you're oh, mad? Sorry. All my family <laughs> lives in Montana. I know. Uh, that's why I was like, dude, you got to get this. I was oh, like, I've been to Montana <clears throat> countless times. I've never seen one fucking sheep. I swear <laughs> to God, I have never seen one sheep. Grizzly bears, black bears. I saw a wolf. Well, that's good. No they, all, they all have chaperones. That's why. <laughs> They're not alone. I was thinking Utah, Montana, or Wyoming. Oh, Rosie, you were right in the wheelhouse. Mm -hmm. Um. And Murray couldn't get the state where his family is from. But Murray. Did, did you know his family was from Montana? Yeah, I did know that. Well, for oh. the record, they live there now. We grew up in Jersey. Where'd Rosie go? Rosie. Rosie Orphic. just bounced. She got she got the answer to her question and she was done. She's, She's like, like, oh, you know Murray's family? Conflict of interest. I'm fucking out. This is some bullshit. We're gonna call that a forfeit. You I'd fixed like to it. my trophy now. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. Um, well, I mean, she just bounced. Rosie, <laughs> something went. Something went down. Everything. She kicked out her cable or something. Um, so, Kate, let's put the let's put the new score back up there. I think it's uh, eight to four. Here comes Rosie coming back. Let's switch on. categories. No, you don't want to switch. <laughs> oh, sorry, Mary. Dude, my dad was a fucking preacher. I studied religion growing up. Lay the shit on. I'm me. back. <laughs> my internet died. Oh, we thought you were quitting because uh, me knowing Murray's family was from Montana was a conflict of interest. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Rosie still has a lead, but it has now been cut down to four points. Cut in half. His Murray gets closer and closer. Let's do. Um. All right. Religious law or state law. Whistling underwater is prohibited. Murray. Murray. State law. Murray Valeriano, you now have your fifth point as that is correct. A chance, Murray, to cut Rosie's lead to two points. Which state says whistling underwater is prohibited. I can only imagine it's the land of a thousand lakes, Minnesota. Murray Valeriano, incorrect. 
I'm not even sure if Minnesota is land of a thousand lakes. <laughs> it's 10,000 10, lakes. That's 10, what it's in land. Yeah. Well, climate change, they're drying up. <laughs> yeah, they got to change their license plate now. Yeah, yeah. Um, Rosie Tran, Murray is knocking at your door. A chance to keep your lead back up at four points. Name the state that has this law. Whistling underwater is prohibited. I have absolutely no idea, but I'm going to take an educated guess. It sounds like a dumb Southern law. So I'm going to guess Florida. <laughs> they need that law because uh, the state of Florida will be underwater soon. Thanks to climate change. Um, but Ron Placone, tell everybody what state that law is in effect. West Virginia. Mm. <laughs> what? It was underwater there. Mountain mom. <laughs> All right, one more question from this category, and then we move on. But Murray did, of course, pick up a point. He's picked up at least one point in every. He said he was going to clean up here, and it's it's narrowing in. By the way, thanks for game fucking now. giving away my strategy to Rosie. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think you kind of said it right. I mean, before um, she got on. Oh, <laughs> okay. And then when she got knocked off. <laughs> yeah, every time she gets, she's off camera. This um, is what I'm going to do next. This is Murray's strategy. Has now gotten him to the place where Rosie has eight, Murray has five. In a very exciting contest, we saw one of the biggest leads ever, eight to one. And now slowly, Murray has been coming back. We were talking about slaughter rules, Ron. And now. And now. It's anyone's game. <laughs> one question. One question. It could be a one-point game after this next question, Graham. Mm -mm. I'm doing I'm this for Tabula go. Rosa in the chat room. <laughs> Kate, can the score please reflect 8-5? Maybe Kate flipped. Oh, she okay, good. Maybe Kate left. Maybe she was like, I think it's bullshit. Murray's family's from Montana, and she left. <laughs> uh, all right. Religious law or state law? Women shouldn't have braided hair. Murray. Rosie. Oh. Rosie's up first. Religious. Rosie Tran, that is correct. You now have nine points back to a four-point lead, a chance to make it a five-point lead, and put victory clo close in your hands. Which religious law? has women shouldn't have braided hair the quran that is incorrect murray has a chance to pick a point back up and keep his only trailing by three points in effect all religion fuck you always know it's either a religious state law because it's if it's oppressive to women it's always religion <laughs> But it could be like it could be so many. It could be the Old Testament. It could have been the Quran. It could be. Oh, um, oh. is it the Torah? Oh, we're not going book, right? I'm going Judaism. Uh, Sorry. Well, no, we can go book. We can, okay. yeah, book. So you're going Torah? Okay. Yes, that's your final yeah. answer. <laughs> the old cryptic. You're just gonna, gonna mumble and hope that I say, "Oh no, you get to guess again." Right. Because right. um, that answer, Ron, tell him what it is. It's incorrect. It's mm. uh, it's just the Bible, and it's not Old Testament. I, so. I didn't think you could repeat the answers. Of course, it's Old Testament bullshit. Of course it is. <laughs> ah, I didn't think you would have the same question with the same religion. Thought you guys knew more than one religion, but that's <laughs> fine. I don't. I don't. You're writers. I don't know. It's probably not a human egg. <laughs> it's great to have a guy who sort of was raised by a theologian having a flip out. I don't think we've had that on the show, Ron, before. <laughs> it says that in the Old Testament, women can't braid their hair. Yep. Yep. The Bible is nuts. I mean, the Bible says That's crazy. That's the shit. least. Like, <laughs> yeah, there's find. way wackier there's stuff the in there. Testament what is the what is I the reasoning? You for having your period. What's the reasoning for the braided hair? 
<laughs> Who cares? There is, none. <laughs> there is that's the whole thing about religion. Yeah, we, we just kind of get the quotes. I, I don't I don't go for it. I don't think there were explanations. One I word, control. It. That's all it is about. <laughs> control and oppression of women. That's it. Yep. Well, I feel like I'm going to braid my hair tomorrow after this podcast. You should. You no, have no, the no, right no, to no. do that, Rosie. I'm braiding my hair. All right. We're now switching categories. Um, let's go with. Hold uh, on. We got a couple uh, discrepancies in the chat room here on my answer. The... It, it, it was an Old Testament. It was when it is. Yeah, because when it is, we accept either Bible or Torah. Then where is it? New Testament. That's in the New Testament? Yes. All right, I'm going to have to look that up. I believe you, but I, that's definitely an Old Testament. Sounds Old Testament. E. No, I know. It. Yeah, but hmm. but no, I mean, just because just they got some new characters, the books still stay pretty well. I'd like to throw a flag on the play. <laughs> You said, you said law, right? Religious law or or uh, state law, and mm -hmm. it says women shouldn't. So that's more of a suggestion. Oh Jesus Christ! <laughs> wow, our first he male wrote that. on the show. Um, this is fantastic. Well, you can call the manager Murray and run it by uh, them, and we'll 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 take your we'll take your grievance. Uh, Kate, you will be getting a call. Just mark it differently on your score sheet. <laughs> All right. All right. Let's do we. All right. So we've got Murray. You did kick my butt in the religious category because I'm a witch. <laughs> I believe we know the correct term for that. Uh, Murray. Asian Karen. Asian. Karen. <laughs> All right. Rosie has the lead nine to five. Murray trails by four. So let's. Um, we have. Four religious, questions. Religious we, versus state law. Religious. No, we're, <laughs> we're going. We have to go. This is um, politician. We're going to do two from this category, and then two. We're going to go back to Republican or who said that Republican or Democrat. So, four questions remaining. Murray, this is your last chance. Polit who said who, this is? I'm going to read something that is a policy that okay. was either or an idea or a plan that was either a politician's plan. Or a supervillain, and it is a super, it is a supervillain who um, was from a uh, superhero movie. Um, so you don't Reset have to be like, of all time. Uh, of all time, okay. But I'm not going to go into like some obscure comic book thing. It's a, it's a comic book hero, but it was from a movie that was on the base. So it's a Hollywood movie with a superhero. Fair. And this is what the supervillain did, or it's an actual politician that tried to do something horrible because all of our politicians are awful. Um, all right. I'm sorry, question. I know you're thinking. Yes. <laughs> did you say supervillain or superhero? Super villain. I'm dead. Politician. Okay. I will read something and you got to tell us either okay. if it's a politician or a supervillain and there's a chance at a second point. So if you say politician and that's correct, you have a chance at a second point if you can name that politician. If it's wrong, the other contestant has a shot. Same thing. If you say supervillain and that's correct, you have a chance at another point naming the supervillain. If it's wrong, they have another shot. Everybody good? All right. No one's talking. Weird. Okay. I thumbed up. I thumbed you up. Thumbs thumbed up. Oh, okay. Thumbs up. Thank you so much. Um, when getting minerals for my business that destabilize a Central American country, I said, we'll coup who we want to coup. Politician or supervillain? Oh, Rosie. no. No, your hand's not up anymore. Um, politician. Incorrect. Oh, my gosh. Murray. Which supervillain did that? Can I guess supervillain? <laughs> <laughs> that's how it worked in politician versus uh democrat versus uh, republican no if you got you got the wrong party it was assumed it was the other party so you just had to go right to guessing the person's name so that's not how we did that right. so i need a super villain can you read the quote again please graham when getting minerals for my business that destabilize a central american country i said we'll coup who we want to coup 
Uh, I thought it was Elon Musk. All right, this is it. We got to do it. Dude. This is I fucked this one up because it wasn't Elon Musk. It's sort of a joke question, but he's not technically a supervillain that's in a movie. So, um, and he's not a politician. I just fucked that up. Was it Elon yeah. Musk? Was in it Elon case, Musk? Yes or no? In that case, Led Zeppelin. The <laughs> Stop. <laughs> what? It was, was Elon that? Musk. So, that's but you said I fucked I did I, this. That's yeah. why I did this, but then I was like, okay, Elon Musk isn't a super villain. He's a real person. I didn't think this category through when I wrote it. These are all mine, and I didn't, I didn't, I fucked this up. So um we we get we get it. So I, technically I, I had it right because I thought it was Elon Musk. Yeah, but I can't give you a point because I fucked this whole thing up. So it doesn't matter. So we're just we're gonna scrap this category. I fucked it up. I gotta rewrite these. Um <laughs> Which again, I think it's the first time that's happened, Ron, on the show, correct? Scrapping a category. Yeah, this is a first. I mean, um, soon he could be a supervillain any day now. He's flying to space. Well, I thought it was a cool idea. So when I saw you do that, I wrote a bunch of those too. So we have some real life supervillain ones in that category. Well, then we just need to, yeah, we got to clarify. We just got to clarify it <laughs> that it's either a comic book supervillain or a real life supervillain. Super so if you know who said it, you know. Listen, however it works, I'm just glad I was asked to come do the run through. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm glad we're not doing this live. Don't forget to send your notes. <laughs> it's, it's all right. Let's just go back to Democrat and a Republican. God damn it. This is just bullshit. Um, Anything can happen where the guy can fuck up a show that he created. Um, <laughs> it's anything can happen. All right, we're going to go back to who said this, Republican or Democrat, just like before. Um, all right, here we go. We've done a lot of these. All right, all right. Um, who said this, Republican or Democrat? Except for the occasional heart attack, I never felt better. Murray. Murray. Got to go Republican. That is correct, Murray. You have a point. A chance at a second point. Which I mean, prominent Republican said this? I got to go Cheney. You just picked up two quick points, Murray. That oh is my God. correct. Well, now we are <sighs> nine to seven. Hmm. Wow. Three more questions remaining. Murray could what, take what, the lead. Clean don't up. cute your way out of this, Tran. I'm coming up your don't. Oh, look at that. Cute dog alert. Cute dog alert. Um, <laughs> next question. Who said this? Republican or Democrat? I want to be clear to folks in the region who are thinking about making that dangerous trek to the United States, Mexico border. Do not come. Do not come. Murray. Murray. Republican. Wrong. Really? Okay. Oh, incorrect. So Rosie, a chance to pick up a point. To Can increase. you repeat the quote? It sounded like you didn't finish it. No, I did. I finished it. It, it, it I've, I'll, I'll say the quote again. Here's the full quote. And we know now that it was a Democrat that said this. So if you can name which Democrat said this, you will get a point. Extending your lead back to three points, making it slightly harder for Murray to make the come from behind win. I want to be clear to folks in this region who are thinking about making that dangerous trek to the United States, Mexico border. Barack Obama. Incorrect. Before you give the answer, it, that it was recent, right? Yes. Yes, it was. You, in, okay. It's, well, you guys have both lost. So, Ron, how recent was it? Was, it? I think it, it was, was very recent. That was Vice President Kamala Harris. Yeah, I thought so. <laughs> yep. Why did she say that? Um, because she's a corrupt politician. Because she's not very nice. Yeah, because she on the campaign trail when she was none running of them the are very night, nice was all like, Mr. Trump's evil telling these people. And then she went down there and said, do not come. She said that on the news about two months ago. Oh, all I politicians are mean. Yes. Yes. Let looking, us not forget. Looking out for him. 
Uh, yeah, she is absolutely looking out for him. Just like when Obama deported 3 million people and built cages. Like, that's what he was doing. That's why both parties are, that's why the Democrats are better, right? Um, all right. Graham, are you being sarcastic? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely not, Rosie Tran. That I can't good... tell. Remember, you said when people can't tell. <laughs> That's right. This voice makes it hard to tell when sarcasm is being said. Next question. So, no points were picked up on that question. We have two questions remaining. Rosie Tran has a thin two point lead very thin lead so if After rosie gets this the game is over if rosie <sighs> sweeps here the game's over if Wait, murray we're... sweeps here it's all tied up or they could split or they could split if there's oh, a split anything or... could happen here oh my god ron what a great yeah. point we could have a sudden death question oh sudden death question could happen or could not this i will say this this is now the single greatest come from if he wins the single greatest come from behind win that we've seen on this show hold on already hold the hold best on. uh deficit Close uh here. stop the goose egg bumper stickers <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna, yeah yeah we're gonna put a one in front of the goose egg and then at murray v on twitter okay go <laughs> Sorry to mess up Murray's merch plans for being the worst <laughs> contestant ever. <laughs> um, all right. Who said this? Republican or Democrat? I hear there's rumors on the internets that we're going to have a draft. Rosie. Mm. Republican? Rosie Tran, that is correct. Which famous Republican said that? If you get this right, you have won. There is no need for another question. If you get this wrong, Murray t gets the point. We will go to that final question. Can you please repeat the question? Yes. I mean, the I quote. Hear, the quote. I hear there's rumors on the internets that we're going to have a draft. The internets. Mitt Romney? Rosie Tran, that is incorrect. Oof. Murray Valeriano, you trail 10 to 7. If you get this correct, you have one more chance to tie and force a sudden death overtime. If you get this wrong, all of your hard work will be for nothing and you will be remembered as just a guy that got close. I'm already remembered as that. Have you seen my career? <laughs> Jesus Christ. I was on a veils three times for three different fucking commercials and didn't get them in the last two weeks. <laughs> Sorry to bring up old wounds. Old? This was last week. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I, I, I only because it's so stupid. And by the way, Maybe the only person oranger than me I'm thinking of on this camera right now would be Donald Trump. Is the only person I can think of who, would, who would say that. Ron Placone, tell everybody why that is incorrect. Ah, damn! Really? The inner there's I hear there's a rumor in the internet's, and that wasn't more. Is than there a president that has said dumber things than Donald Trump? Uh, <laughs> Ron Placone. That was referring to Iraq, and the person who said that was George W. Bush. Yes! Ah. That's why when I read these quotes and there's like a misspelling or a, or a saying something in, grammatically incorrect, that's the key, because that's a George W. Right, but I was going, I uh, Trump's famous, everybody, I've heard it. Rumor has it, you know, and right, people yeah, are yeah. talking. That's the way I was going. I know what you were thinking, man, but that was George W. Bush in the New Testament. That's <laughs> that's what it's from. <laughs> well, you know what that means, ladies and gentlemen. Rosie Tran, you're the winner for anything can happen. Outstanding, but this was a fantastic contest. What I a mean, comeback! Still historic comeback. Murray V, the, the comeback kid. Comeback Thanks, King Murray V. I would just like to say I was super excited when I saw Rosie was going to be on the show. 
Nice. Yeah, That's yeah. fantastic. I haven't seen you in forever, man. It's great to see you. It's because we're um, locked in our homes that's in true. a global pandemic. Mm. It keeps getting worse because people heard some fake doctor on Facebook said something is bad about a vaccine. Anyway, can, I'm not gonna can get I just that. say, Graham, yes. that my mom was an anti-vaxxer and I convinced her, we convinced her and she got vaccinated. So don't give up hope, people, please. Good, good. She was so anti-vax and it we talked had multiple conversations with her and we finally got her to get vaccinated. That's so, so good. Do it's, not uh, do not um <laughs> give up hope. Oh, doggy's barking. <laughs> oh Dogs. Rosie let the dogs out, ladies and gentlemen. Um, well, that is our sh uh, show. First of all, uh, Murray Valeriano, thank you so much. You were trailing big. You came back. You made a big rally back, made it a very respectable contest, came down to the second to last question. Uh, but tell everybody where they can see you, follow you, any live shows, if you're doing them or whatever, where of the podcast where people can follow all your stuff. Man, I thought I had that last one too. I'm bummed. Uh, first of all, thanks for having me, man. I really appreciate it. Yeah, this it. was great. Absolutely. I uh, can't wait to see you in your town. Uh, hey, I do. I have a new music and comedy game show. It's called For What It's Worth. It's YouTube forward slash Murray Valeriano comedy. Uh, check it out. Um, I'm starting a new season. Should launch in the next few weeks. I've had Jimmy Pardo, Greg Proops, Tony Thaxton, the drummer for Motion City Soundtrack, uh, Pat Francis, Mike Schmidt. Uh, I got a couple really good uh, contestants coming up. All three of these guys are slated to do it next season. So um, hop on. It's really a lot of fun. Even if you don't know a lot about music, it's based. It's just comedy around music is what it is. So well, that's that great. At Murray v on Twitter also. Yeah, have have Ron on your show. He knows very he knows a lot about music. I had to reschedule Ron because of conflicts last week, mm. which we're getting him back on. Nice. Mm -hmm. Well, Murray, um, thank you so much for being on the show. Good to see you, dude. I can't Absolutely, wait to see buddy. you soon. Tell Mary I said hello. Oh, I will. We'll and I look talk. forward to seeing you when you come into town, bud. You got it, dude. All right. Good seeing you, Murray. Bye. Oops. Oh. <laughs> that was all right. Bye. Bye. Whoa. Yeah, I didn't mean to cut you off that quickly. I know you're like saying goodbye. <laughs> Right. You can say goodbye, Murray. I did. <laughs> later, <laughs> later, losers. <laughs> what do you, you want me to sing my goodbye out of here? What do you want now? A poem? All right. We'll just thanks, buddy. There you go. See you guys later. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Sorry, pulled the trigger on that too soon. <laughs> Rosie Tran, Tran, I think we're just gonna make the. You've won twice now, right? Maybe we don't know if I won the other time. We don't know if I won. I think she did, right? <laughs> Was Kate, do you remember if she won last time when she played against Karen Rutowski? Do we know? I think it was a very similar situation. And I, I, I thought Karen beat me by a point, but maybe I'm wrong. Maybe that was it. You like took a big lead and then lost it to Karen at the very end or something, I think. I don't remember. I remember maybe. we were making jokes like Karen cast a spell because she was like coming back or something. <laughs> No, Rosie won. A Kate, according to Kate in the chat, Rosie did win. Like, Kate, all right. Well, then I'm the two time champ. <laughs> yes. Uh, our first ever two time champ. This is um, the only two people who've been on the show twice have been Jimmy and Steph, but they have split. They one split. Time, yeah. Jimmy won one time, Steph won. So, am I the most politically knowledgeable comedian then? <laughs> <laughs> at guessing dictators? <laughs> yes, you're the best at guessing dictators. But that was impressive, Rosie. You took a big lead and Murray was coming up hard, but you didn't give up. You didn't quit. You stayed with it. It was exciting. I still think I had a bigger lead. I got that Elon Musk question in my mind. <laughs> yeah, that's my fault. You should have a bigger lead. I screwed. I just, we got to reframe that. Ron and I got to talk some stuff out and figure this I out. I was like, villain. Rule. I was like, it's I like, think Elon Musk said that, but you said comic book villain. <laughs> well, you know what's funny? When you were describing the rules, I was getting nervous because I was just like, I thought Graham wrote an Elon Musk thing. So then after he did that, I wrote a bunch of real life supervillain ones too because I thought it was funny. <laughs> But I was like, maybe we weren't supposed to do that. And I wrote the Elon Musk thing and just forgot that I did it. But yeah. Yeah, we gotta we, just, we gotta, we just gotta tweak out. the the description. Yeah, and, and the rules a little bit on that one. But that's the thing Ron and I are gonna it's talk like about. The anyway, hook hook we're gonna, we're gonna, could be a real villain. We're gonna there's we're in the works. I don't want to get anybody too crazy, but we're in the works of putting together some funding to do like a pilot episode of this, like on a soundstage with a studio audience, 
um, you know, three cameras and make it really look as cool as we can. Um, so we're working on that. One of the things we need to do to make that happen is Ron and I just got to sit down and kind of iron out an actual like structure for a game show, the way a game show would have like round one, round two. Right now we're just like, well, I don't know. Let's, let's go to this category and see who's got <laughs> just so we need to kind of <laughs> iron that out a touch. But that's one of the things we'll do is, is get that super villain category uh, figured out. But, um, Rosie, uh, great. Thanks for doing the show. Uh, it was great having you on. Super fun. And where can people um, watch all your shows, especially your sh new show on Rockfin? Yeah, I want people to check it out on Rockfin. My Rockfin is Rosie Tran. So it's just my name. And then I'm on Twitter at Funny Rosie, um, Facebook at Funny Ro Rosie, Instagram. I'm out of the box Rosie because my podcast is called Out of the Box Podcast. But I really want people to check out the new crypto podcast, Hello Crypto Kitty 2.0. The reason I'm so passionate about it is because there's a digital revolution happening right now. And I really, really want people to become financially independent from this crazy corrupt um, central bank system. You know, Graham, you and I have talked about this quite a bit. And it's just crazy how corrupt the central bankers are and how much wealth they steal from the average American. So a lot of people feel like they can't get ahead um, and they can't. And the reason is because of the inflationary policy of the central bank. So it's fun. You know, I wear my kitty ears and I give the crypto news and I explain different crypto facts and things like that. It's silly and it's fun. And I'm trying to make it relatable because so many people I know are interested in crypto and they're like, oh, this is too complicated. I don't get it. I don't understand it. So I'm trying to make it silly and fun. Well, that's and it's great you're doing that, Rosie, because you've literally helped me personally and helped the show by coming on and just kind of explaining it. You and I have had some phone conversations. And so while I don't consider myself a crypto expert in any way, stretch of the imagination, I do feel like I'm far more knowledgeable about it. And so I tell people, you know, get more knowledgeable, do your own research and watching this show that the crypto kitty show that Rosie is doing now, especially if you're a Rockfin supporter, uh, please check those out because it's another way to expand your knowledge. And Rosie's going to get great guests on and different people in the crypto space. It's a whole new universe out there in that world. And so get knowledgeable. I have no more, unsecured debt. I have no credit card debt, anything Yay! like that. It's, and I got out of it last summer. I have, uh, all I have is a car loan. I mean, so I would tell people like I, I, my goal was to have no more unsecured debt, like a car loan or a home loan is fine, um, uh, for me personally, but like, and, and digital and, you know, cryptocurrency is a big, is a big reason for that. And if all these, you know, like if Bitcoin and Ethereum go crazy through the roof, I might be in a position to to buy a home again uh, since the last one I had was was taken by these very banks and these two corrupt parties. <laughs> so um, it's great what you're doing, Rosie. Really appreciate that you're just out there trying to educate people about crypto. Yeah, and there are scams out there. So I always tell people to do research and that's why I'm giving information because this is something that can really help people and especially low income people and middle class people, you know, people that aren't part of the 1% that are making hand over fist money from the central bank corruption, you know? And so I get really sad and really upset. You know, even some of our videos we've done together, I've seen people in the comment section, oh, crypto's a scam, this and that. And it just, it hurts my heart because that means that that person got involved in a bad cryptocurrency. And so I really want to educate people on the legit ones so that they can make money and help their families because these central bankers have been stealing money from people for almost a hundred years. Uh, yeah, it's insane what they've done. And when you start learning, especially people that watch like my show or Ron's show, like all the corruption of the military industrial complex and all this other stuff, you see how the central banks have played a key role in this never ending wars and the fact we don't have Medicare for all and all this other stuff. So it's great. Well, look at doing. Afghanistan. They just spent trillions of dollars in Afghanistan buying these war machines for a country that didn't want them. And yeah. where does that money come from? It comes from central bank printing and it comes from our US tax dollars. So people, you know, need to get educated and, and understand what's really going on. So I'm really excited when I go on political vigilante, I really get excited when, you know, Ron has me on his show talking about crypto and on my Crypto Kitties podcast so that people can understand what's really happening. And again, I have my kitty ears. It's fun. It's silly. It's not too overwhelming because that was the biggest hurdle that when I got into crypto is I thought, oh, I'm not smart enough to understand mm -hmm. this stuff. Yeah. I think we all did. We all felt like, oh, I don't get this. We all went through that, like, oh, I don't get it. So it's it's good you're helping people. Well, Rosie, thank you so much. Yay! Um, and we'll 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 have you on the show again. Bye, Rosie. Thank you so much. I will be the three time champion. I think. Oh, could be, kiddo. Oh you man, three time champ. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye, right, Rosie. Bye. Have a great night. Ron, do you got time for any? For yeah, any let's show? do a quick one. Let's do a quick. Anything can happen. I'm Rosie ready. You should know this. 
Or yeah, oh uh, yeah, we did anything can happen already. Time for you should know this. <laughs> All right, brother. You go first, man. What do you got? All right. I see the girls walk by dressed in their summer clothes. I have to turn my head until my darkness goes. Oh, I know this song. Oh yeah, you know this song. In their summer clothes. Um, see the girls walk by in their say say it say it again. What is it? I see, I see the girls walk by dressed in their summer clothes. I have to turn my head until my darkness goes. Uh, wait, wait, wait a minute now. God, I know this song. Oh, um, let me make sure I turn off the chat. Um. In the summer club. Wait, 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 wait. Is this the Rolling Stones? Yep. Yes. Yep. Appropriate. Appropriate for this week. I don't know if you know why, but but it is appropriate for this week. Is it I can't get no satisfaction? No, it is not satisfaction. Um, it, I'll tell you this. The title is repeated a lot throughout the song. So, but, uh, but I'll give you a little more lyrics here to help you get the title. Um, I've seen people turn their heads and quickly look away like a newborn baby. It just happens every day. I see the girls walk by dressed yep. in their summer clothes. Oh, I man. have to turn my head. Yeah. I, I see a red door and I go. want it painted black. There you go, yeah. The colors. All right. Well, I think that's the quickest I've ever got one, I think. Yeah, you did good on that one, man. Dude. Painted black by the Rolling Stones. Uh, applicable this week because Charlie Watts passed away at the age of 80. Oh, uh, rest in power, Charlie Watts. Right on, right yeah. on. Yeah, Charlie nice. Watts, man. I, uh, nice. that guy was such a freaking good drummer. Yeah. I, uh, I, I said, I was like, you know, the moment his heart, his heart stopped. That's the only time he missed a beat in his freaking life. That's how good oh, he was. That's, that's how good he was, too. man. That's awesome. He was, he was one of the greats. He was one of the greats. Yeah. That's a, that's a badass jam too, man. Yeah. Well, I mean, the drums on that song are so memorable. Cause it's like, it starts out with that weird guitar riff. Uh, really cool guitar riff, and then it goes like dun 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 dun. dun, dun. And Charlie wasn't like, he wasn't like a super show offy drummer, man. Like he never mm -hmm. did too much, he never did too little. It was always just right. So when it was time to shine, he could shine. But when it was time to just kind of lay back, you know, and let the melody take over, he did that too. So yeah, and then Painted Black was a great example of all that. So that's awesome, man. What a nice tribute to that dude. Like. You know, when somebody passes away, it's always a little sad, but 80 is a full life. We're all, no oh, one's yeah. going to live forever. And look what that guy brought to the world. You know, he brought awesome music. He helped a great band, you know, with a song like that, that it, we're still talking about, you know, 50 some years later. Yeah, um, absolutely, man. The Stones and yeah. Yeah. You know, condolences to the family and anybody who had a death poll going on which Rolling Stone would die first because they probably all lost money on this. I, I think even Keith Richards lost some money. He probably bet on himself and he's like, no shit, man. Charlie, God, I, I was just going to give my 20 bucks to want to mix 45 kids. I did not expect this. <laughs> Oh, that's so great. Charlie yeah. was the one that didn't party, man. Charlie was the one, like, he didn't do drugs. He didn't, you know, his vice was cigarettes, and he did mm -hmm. get lung cancer. Ah. So yeah. sometimes just because drugs are legal doesn't mean they're okay for you. No, they are not. Um, yeah, no. Um, well, that's cool, man. All right, let me think of... Um, let me think of... Um, all right. Um, okay. Um, 
Let's do. All right, let's do. Um, oh, wait, hold on. No, I think I ah, shit. Um, there's a, I, I, and I, I've asked Kate to put this together, but we haven't got it finished yet. But there's a list where we're going to, I'm going to have Kate compile uh, all the cat, all the movies and songs we've done. So I don't repeat one because I have a couple of my ride, but I've, I think I've done that already, but I'm not sure. Dude, there's just um, a better chance I'll actually get it if it's a repeat. <laughs> I'll be like, I mean, I've guessed ones that you've already done before. Yeah, you'll just say the name again, which is Movies great. Movies have a lot of lines. They do. They do. Yeah, actually, tons of lines. It's easier with a movie to repeat it because you could pick a line that the person doesn't remember. Yeah, with the song, it's like, what are you going to do? Do a different verse? It's like, well, I already got that. There's a sex bot in the chat. Kate. Oh, fun. So um, there we go. Let's get rid of that sex bot. Yeah. Sex bot in the chat. Great Rolling Stones tune, by the way. <laughs> One of my favorite. It was um, on their 05 release. <laughs> uh, the the stones are the best drugs that's why they're all still here that's correctly um all right um okay here's a movie I'm blanking. All right. Um, okay. Well, I think not. I know I've done that one. Damn it. I keep thinking. Um, um, that sneaky sex bot has made three accounts so far. Oh, wow. Sex bots in the chat. Um, That's from uh, that Mark Zuckerberg movie. social network that's correct i get that it is, that's correct all right um all right oh, my brain is mush i'm just blanking let's see okay here we go um the sopranos <laughs> They do a lot of silence things. <laughs> um, all right. But God, I'm just blank. Okay, okay. Here, God, I'm just, let's go with. Um, I wonder if the audience can guess which one of us thought about theirs ahead of time. <laughs> and who just thought they'd wing they it? Know. And, then, and then, and then. And Mine was all like movie. applicable to the time. <laughs> and then you're just like, ah, oh, fuck a movie. I don't watch those. <laughs> oh. A lot of people prepare for shows that they've created. I don't think that's the way to go, Ron. I think you fly in <laughs> loosey goosey. Um, There's a category. It might not even be a thing. We're just going to try it live. <laughs> I'm going to have them just... <laughs> Read some stuff that doesn't quite work. And Here's these not... rules that weren't what I wrote. <laughs> did I, oh. did I say is... politician? I meant this is from a movie. Shit. All right. No one, no one wins. Oh, it's been a stressful week. It's been, <laughs> we've been a lot dealing with a lot. Um, all right. Here we go. He prepares the same for government secrets. Somebody put in the chat. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's true ish. Um, okay, here is the movie. Um, and uh, okay, so. 
<laughs> really, I, this is this is this is nuts. Okay, here we go. Um, uh, Charlie didn't get much USO. He was dug in too deep or moving too fast. Charlie didn't. Oh shit! I think I know this. Charlie didn't get much USO. He was dug into. It's not Willy Wonka, is it? No, but that's that's in the ballpark. It's in the time frame, Charlie not didn't... genre. Definitely is not genre. comedy. No, no drama. Is it military centric? Yes. Okay. Uh, Charlie didn't get any USO. He was in too deep. Um, so seventies military. Oh wait, it's that movie where they like built that bridge, right? Is it that one? You know what I'm talking about? Where like they build that bridge and then the guy gets mad when they burn the bridge. You know that, that yes, movie? I do know that movie. The That's... British guy gets pissed off because he gets attached to the bridge. It's fucking weird. He was a prisoner and they made him build the bridge, but then he's like, oh, I'm really proud of my bridge. And then like when they go, he's like, I'm going to die for this bridge that I didn't even want to build like three months ago. <laughs> it's just like the, the moral of the story. If you get set to war, you might get attached to a bridge. <laughs> Look out. Is that the movie? What's it called? That movie is not the movie I'm quoting. The movie you're talking about is Alec Guinness. Um, who is in Bridge Over the River Kwai, That's which is movie. like an epic war movie, but your description is the greatest <laughs> description of this like AFI That's top what 100. It's about. That's what happens. <laughs> if you go to war, you might get too attached to your enemy's bridge. Yeah, you so might be must. like, oh shit. I mean, I don't know. I mean, yeah, they're the bad guys, but I fucking built this thing. Like, like we're here to liberate you. It's just like, well, just don't fuck up my bridge while you're doing it. I know, like, I mean, being a prisoner of war, yeah, I was a drag, but but don't. If you got to ruin this bridge, I'll stay. <laughs> it was a good movie. I mean, I, I think. I don't remember, but all right, so it's not the answer. <laughs> it was a good movie, I think. I can't remember. Is the it was a while ago when I saw it. Because, like, I was, I was kind of, I mean, in that last scene, I was watching it with my family, Cause like I think I think it was actually the holidays and like someone bought it for my dad on DVD and he goes oh this 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 will bring the holiday spirit in let let's watch this and so like we watched it <laughs> and like towards the end I was just like really this is how this guy wants to go out he's gonna he's tapping out this way this is he made it this far and now he's like ah, not my bridge yeah no That's no this is where I draw the line the bridge. <laughs> I was like, you fucking kidding me? This is just a Rob Lico movie sum up. It's like, I don't know why these are running around trying to save this private Ryan guy. Who gives a shit? Like, <laughs> let him figure his own thing out. Why are we? He's, why, just, why he's I... just one guy and there was a sad English teacher. That's the movie. <laughs> it's like, like Forrest Gump. Like, God, this guy wasn't too bright. And so he was in the right place at the right time all the time. And he like never realized it. And then he finally gets the girl and she dies. That's the movie. <laughs> oh, Ron sums up the AFI top 100. It's like, oh, a boy returns home from the war to take over his family's business. The Godfather, whatever. <laughs> Who cares? I mean, I like oh. all these movies. Like, this isn't like a me bashing. Thing. It's just like, that's just oh. what I take Thank away you. from it. It's yeah, you're not slamming these movies, just your takeaway. Is like that dude fucking... loved the bridge. <laughs> Guy gotta hug him up on a bridge. Like, why? <laughs> just escape. Get out of there. Yeah, right. You could have just bounced anyway. Um, oh, all right, so it's Jesus. not that. Um, it's for sure oh. not Forrest Gump either. Um, but it's 70s and it's like war stuff. You do a lot of war stuff. Um yeah. All quiet. No, that's a book. Uh, I was going to say, they did, all quiet. That, they did make, they did make that into a movie all quiet on the Western front. I'll throw it out there. Then is it all quiet on the Western no. front? All right. No, but enough. they did make that into a movie. <laughs> all right. It's not stripes. Cause you did that last week. Uh, no, or last comedy. Time. Yeah. It's a comedy. 
Um, oh man, shit. A Rolling what? Stones song is played during a, a, a kind of an iconic section of the movie. Not the okay. one where I'm quoting, but an, mm. a Rolling Stones song is played. Fuck, you know what? It's probably one of those things where I've like seen the poster and I've seen stuff about it, but like the title will not hit me. You know what I mean? Um, I'll give you this hint. Yeah, give me a hint. I'm almost certain we. I have done this another quote from this movie <laughs> during this game oh, show. Oh, really? Yes. Okay, so this is a repeat. All right, so it's it's not that Blue Dog Night movie that you like. Is that that one? <laughs> The movie that you keep kind of changing the title of it? No, it's yeah, not. It's, it's not, not Blue one. Dog Night. All right, What's... it's not Citizen Kane. That's older. Um, it's uh, mm, uh, what was that other war movie you did once? You did another <laughs> one that was like pretty Citizen. No, fuck. Um, Black Hawk Down. Uh, no, but that that's not the seventies. That was in the late nineties, early two thousands, I think. Ah, shit. Early two thousands um, for sure. All right, it's definitely not Green Mile. It's not Saving Private. Run. Yeah, I'm thinking all newer stuff, seventies, and you think you did it before. I should start writing down all the ones you do in case, like, I get one of these. Um. All right, give me another hint. Um. Mister Clean came from some South Bronx shithole. And I think all the sound and the lights of blank really put the zap on him. Is it deer hunter? Ooh, very close. Oh, but it's not deer hunter. Okay. Very, very close. Mm. But I don't think I've done deer hunter yet. Is it apocalypse now? Yes, that's correct. Oh, good. Cause that was literally the only other 70 war movie. It, I know the name of. So, um, that's why I was like, I wanted to do it, but, but then I realized, uh, I was blanking on all these other ones. I'll, I'll do another line from this movie. So this is, this is Martin Sheen going, Charlie didn't get much USO. He was dug in too deep or moving too mm. fast. He had two ways home victory or death, but the other scene in the movie and why I said, Mr. Clean, that's Lawrence Fishburne's character in the movie. And, um, they're on the boat. And then also Timothy bottoms plays Lance, who's a, a surfer and there's a scene where they're on the boat you know they spend most of the movie on the boat going up river and and he's water skiing off the edge of the boat and they're playing uh satisfaction oh and, cool man okay and it's showing sort of the absurdity of the vietnam war specifically in the eyes sure. of uh, francis ford coppola so I that's gotta nice. see. Yeah, I've seen bits. That's one of those movies I've seen bits and pieces of it where it's like it's on. You know what I mean? But I've never just sat down and absorbed it, uh, which <laughs> I, I need to do. I mean, th there's a lot of movies I really need to just uh, just absorb. You need to absorb it for several reasons. One, obviously, it's just a really good movie, but it's a, it's a heavy anti-war film, and it's um, Coppola really wanted to show the insanity of war, um, and he's. You know, he's kind of playing upon Hearts of Darkness, that book. Um, and there's a great comp uh, companion documentary called uh, Hearts of Darkness, A Filmmaker's Apocalypse, which because it took him two and a half years to make this movie. And it was over budget and people were going crazy. The studios wanted it. I mean, everyone was like, what is happening? And when he released the film, it blew people's minds. So right on. Yeah. 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 And then well, yeah, it was Dennis like my only. It. OK. Yeah, no, I, I gotta see it. Deer Hunter too. I've never seen Deer Hunter. Oh, I gotta, I, I gotta watch both of those. And yeah, those are the only. If if it's Deer, a seventies war movie and it's not one of those two, I'm not gonna guess it. You're not. So if there's if there's any other ones, I'm like never gonna. I'm never gonna. Well, those it. two movies Hunter, were fuck, nope. They're 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 both. Especially and Deer Hunter too is very. They were both heavy anti-war, heavy anti-Vietnam War films that were. You know, yeah, it was that they're both really deer hunter is and you've seen all these amazing young actors, a young Christopher Walken in it, uh, young Robert De Niro, young Meryl Streep. Um, 
young uh what's his name who played fredo john john Cazale. um uh yeah he's in the movie it's it's really it's a really solid it's a great film yeah see both right of those on movies. man well rolling stones are a good band yes they are ron and i'm gonna listen to them i've been listening to them all week oh so that's good, cool you know good reason to visit revisit some rolling stones music you know well, cool, dude. Thanks for doing the show. Always great to have you. Next week, um, we'll try to get contestants, or maybe we'll just do You Should Know This, and I'll try to prepare beforehand. Yeah, you know, it's. <laughs> I think I got that was the first time I got it quicker than it took you to come up with it. That was the first, <laughs> like, I, like, I got the answer. Like, it was, it was less time me getting that answer than it was for you to be like, oh, movie, I don't know. What could I possibly come up with? I know that was pretty awesome. Um, but, uh, all right, dude. Yeah, man. If I can let everyone know, of course, follow me on Twitter at Ron Placone and YouTube Ron Placone and Rockfin Ron Placone. And please check out my movie trailer. You can find it on my yes. uh, Twitter. It's the pin tweet. And you can find it on my YouTube channel or my Rockfin, which is just Ron Placone. The movie is called Left at Wall. We made a trailer for it. It's loosely based on what happened with GameStop. So it's an explainer film kind of about Wall Street. Um, and, uh, you can even go right to gofundme.com and just type in left at wall and it comes up. Uh, there's a lot of perks for people who contribute. So if you're able to contribute, there's tons of cool perks. You get a shout out on my podcast as a thank you. You get, uh, there's a Q and a with the, uh, cast members and a virtual screening that we're going to do. And, uh, you can even get your name in the credits. So there's a lot of cool perks out there. If you are able to contribute, that's wonderful. But even if you're not, Please check out the trailer, share it, like it. That's awesome. Yeah, support it. It's a great way to crowdfunding. You know, I've crowdfunded two, two films and the first year of the podcast festival. So it's a really great way you're, you as the audience are part of making a, a, a scripted piece of art. So you get to do that. I would have gone nuts if I could have donated $25 to make Apocalypse Now or the first Christopher Nolan Batman movie or something like that. I would have right. been so down with that. Yeah. Um, so right on. Thanks, dude. Thanks for coming on the All show. Right, we'll, we'll talk to you soon. All right, buddy. Peace. All right, brother. Later. All right. Let me read. Um, let's see if there's any over on rockfin.com slash Graham Melwood. Thank you to Mira Maxwell, shave your knuckles for justice. Thank you for supporting the show. Thanks to the lot of you for enticing me to jump into crypto a while back. What a wild ride. Thumbs glad. Thank you, Mira. I'm glad to hear that. Yeah, it's, it's been, it's been great. Um, it has been great. Mira Maxwell tipper for Murray. Boom. Thank you, Mira. Thank you for supporting our show at rockfin.com slash Graham Elwood. Go watch uh, Rosie's new show over there. If you guys are rock go, go support what Rosie's doing. Um, and who else do we got ladies and gentlemen thank you to everybody otr trucker and everybody over at rockfin we appreciate it please hit the like button subscribe do all that business um let me make sure we got them all whoa boom shackalack all right Bill Nye, the highest guy. Bill, thank you for supporting the show. Karaoke request, Shatner singing The Bigger the Figure by Louis Prima. <laughs> All right, I could do that. The Bigger the fig fig Figure by Louis Prima. Kate, shave your knuckles for justice. Thank you, Kate. Comedy live tour dates with Graham and Ron Placone. Headed your way. Starts in San Francisco from us. September 11th. Ends in Madison. Go to GrahamElwood.com or Ron Placone for tickets. Thank you, Kate. Um, shave your knuckles for justice. Um, boom, 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 boom. We have 175 likes. I like it. Thank you for watching the show, everybody. And, uh, thank you for those who are new, um, who are supporting me on TikTok? I'm over 27,000 followers. I've done that in like less than a month. 3.9 million on my um, on my most uh, watched video. Check that out at Graham Elwood. All right, um, what was that Louis Prima song? 
Bigger the Figure by Louis Prima. All right, so if you're watching on YouTube, we got to say goodbye because there's the YouTube has been dinging me with copyright issues. So uh, all the karaoke is now over at rockfin.com slash Graham Elwood. If you're a premium member at Rockfin, you get to see all the karaoke, all the live streams, and the archive, and all that stuff. You get to see Graham Goes to Russia, Afghanistan, or also over at Rockfin Premium. So check that out, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you to Rosie Tran, uh, Murray Valeriano, and Ron Placone. Join us over. I'm going to Rockfin right now. If you're on YouTube, we got to sign off. So thank you, YouTubers. We'll see you over on the Rockfin. Shave your knuckles for justice, YouTube. Ba-boom. <laughs>